In 2016 in Great Britain, 2,440 primates were used for the first time in experiments. That's about 47 a week, roughly seven a day, and if you count a working day as being eight hours, one primate an hour. So what exactly is happening every hour of every working day of every week to these beautiful, intelligent and sensitive animals? One use of primates which Animal Aid has recently highlighted is the use of monkeys to try to cure Parkinson's. But the way in which this disease is studied in monkeys is truly horrifying. We recently highlighted experiments conducted in London where 12 monkeys were ejected with a brain damaging chem chemical which is called MPTP. This causes symptoms of paralysis, a lack of coordination, seizures and a hunched posture. The terrible state these monkeys are left in by, giving, by being given the, treat, the chemical MPTP is chilling. For any animal to be so disabled by a chemical that it's unable to eat or drink by themselves and needs to be bathed is truly horrific. The padded units suggest that the animals would be falling about so would require padding so as not to be injured. And the insulation and heated blankets also suggest how poorly the poor animals are likely to feel. The researchers also said that they would use half-sized cages for the really severely disabled animals. Now, we know quite a lot about the MPTP experiment because it was published in a journal and you can get hold of journals on the internet and you can read them and you can find out exactly what happens. Some experiments, such as those conducted for regulatory toxicology, are less publicised. These typically involved animals being dosed, whether that's force feeding, injections or inhalation, in order to discover how poisonous a substance is or whether a drug works. These experiments are typically carried out in contract research organisations and they don't publish their experimental results. One other way, way we can get information, which was mentioned by Angie Greenaway earlier, is through non-technical summaries. These are basically part of the license application. One summary we found describes experiments which aim to understand how certain areas of the brain support processes such as learning and making decisions. The experiments would involve eight monkeys. Now we know from previous similar work that this typically involves the removal of a section of skin and the underlying skull. The monkey then has a head cap attached, which is secured in place using dental cement. This allows the experimenters easy access to the monkey's brains for recording its activity. The monkeys usually, at a later date, will have a head holder attached to their skull, which enables them to be held rigidly in place for hours while electrodes are inserted into their brains. During the testing and recording periods, these wonderful, intelligent and extremely agile animals will typically be seated in restraint chairs in which their legs will be strapped to the legs of the chair and their hands shielded from their faces, possibly with their arms strapped to the chair arms. In this way, they can operate the joystick, touch a screen to point out images, they can't scratch their faces, they can't touch the expensive electrodes or otherwise interfere with the recording equipment. Sorry. The chair in this case is described as an enclosed testing chair. Please just take a moment to consider and imagine the total feeling of abject helplessness. You're strapped into a chair, unable to move, and you don't know why you're there. Once the monkey is undergoing the testing part of these procedures, electrodes will be inserted into the monkey's brains in order to collect data. So, trapped in a chair, unable to move, held in place by your head, thirsty, and working so you can drink. The summary of this re research explains that these experiments typically last two to three years. Over this time, the monkeys will be subject to having electrodes penetrate their brain and restraint and thirst for between 15 and 45 days. The side effects noted in the summary of cutting open the animal skulls and inserting electrodes into their brains can include infection within their skulls, brain hemorrhage and seizures. Once the animals have endured these operations, restraint and deprivation, they will be killed with an anaesthetic overdose. I've talked about two specific experiments involving 20 monkeys, 
But as I mentioned earlier, 2,440 monkeys were used in last year. That is the tip of the iceberg. In 2016, almost 4 million animals were used in laboratories in Great Britain. The great majority of these animals were mice, about 74, 75%. And mice, despite their tiny size, are just as important as primates. Each of these animals was an individual, and each of these animals count. To all those individual animals, I say, we remember you, we mourn your loss, and we are sorry for what our fellow humans did to you. Thank you.